Hi, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the Muslim Apologies in um, cooperation with Kum uh, Academy. And today we're going to be doing a sort of like discussion debate, if you may, on uh, the topic, does God exist? Or rather, <clears throat> to make it much more, um, much more friendly, uh, intellectual discussion, is it much more reasonable to believe that God exists? Let's, let's just put it that way. Um, I will, I, my name is Hasmi and I've been a revert to Islam for about 20 years now from the uh, Sikh religion. And I have uh, studied uh, Christianity, Atheism and many other religions and come to the understanding that um, we have many ideas of God. Uh, the one that really makes sense to me is the Islamic God. And I'm going to share the reasons why today, and I'm going to also share the evidence today. Um, and my friend Chris, from all the way from Alabama, will be, of course, talking from the other side of the uh, fear that he uh, does not believe or does not need to believe in an existence of a God. So let us start. I'm going to just start simply by saying, is it much more rational to believe in the existence of God rather than not? I'm going to say yes, of course. Um, are there evidence for, for God? Uh, we hear many times atheists or even agnostics asking for evidence. This is a very loaded question because evidence works in many ways. Um, to the Christians, to them, God is physical. Or someone that they know that uh, is Jesus Christ, may they call it a three in one or, or anything. But yet we don't see the whole of the world believing even when they have, you know, someone standing in front of them and saying that this is God. So seeing is not just believing. Okay, it's, it, it, it has never been like that. So I think it's really, um, it's not, not very intellectual to ask the question, I want the evidence to see God before I believe in the existence of God. I think that is not an intellectual take because God is not a physical thing and it is in the metaphysical world. And if we are going to be using science to try to understand God, then I think we are using the wrong tool. Science work on a physical realm, something that, they can, that can be taken and can be tested and can be looked at and looked at how the changes and then get, it, get the data done. You can't do this with uh, metaphysical things. Example, <clears throat> You can't do this with consciousness, neither can you do this with intelligence. But, of course, science can show certain levels of things. For example, intelligence. We can look the intelligence differences from an animal, say a dog, and a human being. Some would argue to say that animals have got, uh, you know, certain ways to act and it's just the way that they act. Um, I would not say so because when you look at a dog, they are even capable of saving men. They know where to go. They know how to look. They know they know certain things that shows intelligence in them, and it's just not their, their, their instincts. But ask a dog to create a universe. Ask a dog to create a phone. Ask a dog to create a rocket. It's simply out of the mind that we can actually think a dog could actually have uh, that level of intelligence. Because then, you know, Elon Musk and a dog would not be any much difference if you can create a rocket, right? But a human being, the intelligence levels difference of all uh, different when we see all the things that humans have created throughout time, uh, car, electricity, energy, sorry, not energy, car, electricity, right? Uh, phone, rocket, laptops, and so on. So we ask, can something literally give birth or bring into existence right from for something that is from nothing nothing is the absence of everything right so you need something in order for you to bring it into existence i'm not saying that this is god in any way shape or form what i'm gonna first uh, uh try to, uh, to 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 make clear is that there needs to be an uh, entity, whether you want to call it energy, whether you want to call it singularity, whether whatever you want to call it is fine. Okay. I'm not saying that this is God yet. Okay. We're not talking about God at this moment, but there needs to be a point where everything begins from. 
um, if we look at the infinite regress, right, what we have is that we have us here today in this point in time. And if things keep going back, for example, me, before me was my dad, before my dad, it was his dad, before his dad, his dad, right? I cannot then be here because time would go would have gone back infinitely and the fact is if time goes back infinitely in that way then I cannot be here so the very fact that we are here today in this point in time shows that time had to stop one at one point and from there all things was created back down once again, you can call it a singularity, you can call it energy, you can call it anything you want to call it, okay? Uh, but we need to know that there is or has to be, before the Big Bang, something there. Uh, scientists will call it as the singularity. So let's use the word singularity, right? Scientists have not yet come to a conclusion, what is a singularity? They know that it's, uh, they, they, they use the name as singularity or they call it a singularity, but they don't really know what this, this, this entity is. So when we put our reasoning and our intellect into this and uh, look at certain things, let me give you an example. If I were to walk into a room and I would see a cake over there on, on the table and no one else around, it would be logical for me to uh, come to a logical conclusion that someone made the cake it could not have just appeared out of nothing that's one number two i can pause it and look at how the cake is done does it taste good does it looks good is the icing good right and from there i can logically logically make a, a, an assertion that whoever who baked this cake has experience he has experience he knows what he's doing Right, and he, he, I mean, he's intelligent in whatever that, that, that he was doing the cake because the cake is done well. Now, if you have never baked a cake before, you don't know how to bake a cake, try baking a cake and you'll probably get your answer there. Right, so <clears throat> when we look, when we put this into a, a wider spec, the idea, it has the, the, the universe is even more complex than a, a, a cake baking thing, right. So whatever created this universe or brought this universe into existence needed to be conscious before even being intelligent, it needed to be conscious, right? And for the fact that it creates, it creates the universe in a fine tuning way that everything is tuned to a very fine, minute scale shows that this uh, creator or this conscious uh, uh, thing, right? is intelligent he knows what he's doing he's not just doing things out of you know just nothing he knows exactly what to do and how to do it just intelligence right and because he has intelligence and he creates he needs to have a will this now becomes the idea of the islamic god of course there are many more evidence for that which we would uh, you know uh, cover Maybe later on, inshallah, or, or, or other or in other segments, inshallah. But at the, today, we're going to be talking about that. I just want to focus on the idea of uh, intelligence, on the idea of uh, it's not regress, and also on the idea of consciousness. When we say that I want to see God before I believe God, what's the evidence for God? Right, and I say consciousness could be one is one of the evidence of God. I'm not saying consciousness is God. I'm saying consciousness is one of the evidence for the existence of God. Now you can't taste consciousness. You can uh, touch consciousness. You can see consciousness. I mean, consciousness. All of us would agree is not in the physical world. If Chris is going to say that consciousness is in the physical world and we can test it then chris would have to show us today what material is consciousness made of if it is in in the physical world because it has to be a material thing and i don't think so that um anybody could do that because even scientists who have studied this are uh, not even close to, to proving what consciousness really is 
some would say consciousness is the power of the intelligence of your brain. That's not really consciousness, is it? It's just the it's just the explanation of brain or how the how brain works, right? You can ask yourself if the, if a tree is conscious. You can ask yourself if a tree is conscious and then try to look for a brain in a tree. You probably not find it. Anyway, so when we look into this uh, aspect or this kind of idea, right? When we put infinite regress, so it, it needs to be a singularity. Okay, I'm, I'm going to use the word singularity. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to not use the word uh, God yet so many times. Okay, and from that singularity, we can posit to say since it created right uh, things in a certain way that shows it has intelligence. Okay, and shows that it has a will. These are basically what the Quran says about the attributes of god we as muslims we will not we will never say that we know god allah 100 percent but we do know allah or god what what he has told us about himself and how to look for him in all of this um this evidence that that, that has been given out so when we look at this I would say that it is much more reasonable to believe in an existence of a God rather than not. Okay, rather than not. Because things could not have just come out of nothing. That's, uh, that, that's I think a lot of even, even 80s would agree that. Such people like Richard Dawkins and so on were new 80s. Um, and things could not have just come about in a certain way out of just sheer chance. Right. Try once again, try baking a cake out of chance and not having any knowing knowledge of baking a cake before. What is the possibility that the cake will happen? A, a better analogy. Try giving a monkey an ink bottle and ask him to write down something of works like Shakespeare. What is the possibility? Of course, I have gone through some uh, uh, discussions with atheists and they say, well, there is a possibility. All right, if you're going to argue about that, then that, that, that a monkey could, uh, given just an empty book and ink, and can produce something of, at, at the caliber of Shakespeare, um, if you want to say that, yes, you know, out of a million chance, there is still at least, you know, a certain percent of chance that it could happen, then I would have to say, what are the chances? Which, what is it more logical for you to believe out of that chance? What is it more logical for you to believe out of that chance? Is it, if I give you 10, the number from 1 to 10, what would you say? Would you say number 5, that a, a monkey could do it? Would you say that? Because you know by yourself, that the, the, the idea of it seems impossible, though there might be a chance, but the idea of it itself, that a monkey could actually produce something at the caliber of uh, Shakespeare, is a very, very, very far-fetched idea. It's a very far-fetched idea. Yes, scientists have been, uh, you know, looking at chips and they have been uh, uh, training monkeys and all that, but they have not gotten monkeys to write something as that far. And yes, you could say that, um, you know, maybe somewhere in the future, million years down the road. Yes, um, I would rather not talk about what's going to happen in the future, what, what's going to happen in a million years. Rather, uh, I, I'd rather just keep it in within the realm of what we do know today and what and where we are today and how we are today from all the knowledge that we have learned today. So in this uh, aspect while looking at this again i say it is much more reasonable it is much more intellectual to believe that a god exists um to quote the uh, british comedian ricky garbus or something like that his name is he's he made a statement he said i don't he doesn't believe in 2999 gods okay oh sorry he said that we the theists don't believe in 2,999 gods. He just doesn't believe in one more. That's like saying, I have tasted 
every single carbonara pasta in the world before and know that no single carbonara is tasty. That is how ridiculous of a claim Ricky is making. In, it, he, he has not looked into this, he has not uh, put his time into it, he has not studied it, he has not uh, looked into the Quran, he has not looked into Islam, he has not looked into any of this, and he is just completely saying that, you know what, everybody don't believe this God, I'm just saying I don't believe in another God. Without even knowing anything. And sure, if, for example, a Christian would come to me and say, I don't believe in the idea of God, that God could be man and die on the cross and, and, and so on and so forth. I would say to the atheist, you're not wrong there. I don't believe in that God. If an atheist come to me and say, I don't believe that God is a man above, us, above the sky with a long beard, looking down on everyone, waiting to judge them. I don't believe in that God. I would agree with you. I don't believe in that God because that is not the concept of God in Islam. That is not what Islam has taught us what God is. God is something more than that. Let's just put it this way. If I can show you God, then that is not God. Right? So just to see God doesn't make it God. I think it's rather ridiculous for someone to ask, proof or evidence from God or for, for God for the existence of God just by asking I want to see God show him to me bring him to me because if I can do that then that would simply not be God in the Islamic paradigm right God is uh, uh, something more or, or something more than that so the Quran says Laisa shay, which means he is nothing like his creation and that his creation can never imagine how he is. So that, so then this tells a lot. This tells us that we cannot imagine how God is and he cannot look anything like his creation because he is nothing like his creation. But there are evidence of his, exi of his existence, right? When we look at the, the, the universe, we know that the universe is expanding today. So that makes the universe a place that, 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 that is not infinite, it's finite. It's infinite, sorry. Finite, finite, yeah, right? So because it's expanding, we may, we may not know where are the ends of the universe. Scientists may not know where are the ends of the universe, but because it is expanding, we know that it has an end. You have okay? two minutes because left. If Okay, because if it's not expanding, then you can't actually really uh, uh, make the progress of knowing that the universe is expanding, right? And from there, we know that the earth had a beginning. So everything that has a beginning needs to have something outside of that that brought it into existence. And for me to just uh, sum this up, whatever that brought it into existence is singularity, we need to ask the question, can it be in any other way, in any other universe? For example, the existence of it. If there were 30 other universes, can this singularity not exist in other 30 universes to bring the universe into existence? So no, right? It has to exist. So it cannot exist in any way different in any other space or any other time or any other universe. It has to be the way it One minute is. Left. It has to be the way it is because everything is has to be contingent to it and it does not have it does not uh, depend on anything else um i will just end it right uh now and i'll uh, hand it over to chris for if uh, have any extra time let's go ahead. all right all right thank you uh, very much for the, the opening statement smith so um let me uh, reset the counter okay um the timer all right so i guess i'll hand it over to you chris and you may start whenever you're ready all right Just watch on that timer and see it reset and then i'll go yeah it's, it's reset okay just waiting for you okay. to when, once you start speaking I will, I will start the timer all right all right 
Okay. Well, I'm happy to be here today to do this debate. This is kind of the first for me, so um, I'm really just doing this for fun. Um, let's see how this goes. I don't know much about my opponent that I'm debating. I try not to tailor my talk to who I am engaging, instead preparing for arguments. I don't look at this right here as a big sports competition event like some other people do. I really want to have conversations. So we may not have the same vocabulary. We may end up debating terminology at some point. I don't mind uh, semantic discussions. They are about meaning, which is important. I hope we can avoid tangents, which delve into labeling, because we might disagree on a, the atheist label, and focus more on the task at hand, does God exist? As a kid, I used to watch a TV show called Ripley's Believe It or Not. And as it was a show that reported and demonstrated an amazing facts and feats that were seemingly unbelievable or extraordinary at face value, but they were either actually real or at least most of them were. I was a Bible-believing Southern Baptist Christian, and it was very clear to me that what you believed is a separate issue from what is actually true. God either exists or does not exist, irrespective of whether you believe he exists or believe he doesn't exist. I reject both. For any given claim, and note I'm talking about a claim here, not a question, there are only two possibilities. Either you believe the claim or you do not believe the claim. If you do not believe the claim, in other words, you reject it, that does not mean you accept the contradictory claim. By way of example, if I had a jar of coins here, one might ask, is the number of coins in the jar odd or even? After all, we must know it's one or the other. And about the question, you might have a number of different positions. You might think it's odd. You might think it's even. Uh, you could reject neither or either. But when you consider the statement, the number of coins is odd, you either believe that or you do not. There is no middle ground. Believing and not believing are direct logical negations. And to propose a middle ground on that single claim would be to violate the fund. <sighs> The, foundation, uh, the foundations of reason. Sorry, a little nervous here. This is where we get into confusing language about how we talk about these things because we are thinking about a question and what we really need to be addressing is a statement. The default position should be to reject or disbelieve all claims until such time there is sufficient reason to accept them, which could be really easy for some claims. For something like coins in a jar, we don't have to default to it's odd until you prove it's even or it's even until you prove it's odd, because we recognize that those things are equally likely and that they are both testable and falsifiable, and the impact of being wrong is negligible. I can't pronounce that word. Negligible. Sorry. But when it comes down to things like in a trial in a court of law, the United States, we have a presumption of innocent until guilt is proven. There is a burden of proof set on the prosecution. They are raising a claim that the defendant is guilty, and as a member of the jury, you either render a verdict guilty or not guilty, and the verdict of not guilty is not a declaration of either innocence, or well, it's not a declaration of innocent, and it doesn't say anything about what you actually are convinced of. It just says what you are not convinced of. You may be convinced that the defendant is actually innocent, or you may not be convinced of guilt. You may even be convinced that he probably did it, but the evidence wasn't sufficient for you to render a verdict beyond a reasonable doubt or to a reasonable certainty of whether the standard or whatever the standard is for that trial. So for clarity, I find God not guilty of existing. The claim some God exists has, to my mind, not met its burden of proof. Whether or not I also find God innocent of the charge of existing is secondary and irrelevant to whether or not his guilt has been established. It seems to frustrate some people want to defend what some call the non-theistic position rather than defending the position that God, in fact, does not exist. But that is not my problem. We think it, it is preposterous to walk into a courtroom where one side is trying to prove guilt and the other side is trying to prove innocence. What if neither of them succeed? What, what do we do then? What do we do with the person that's been accused? We don't know, and that's why we have burdens of proof. We have default positions for other reasons because of any claim to... Uh, hang on, let me start over. 
we have default positions for other reasons because for any claim uh, to be of use, it must be falsifiable, meaning there must be some observation that would demonstrate that the claim is false. We address claims and not questions for those reasons and many more because it gets very messy. There's reasons that syllogisms don't contain questions. They contain statements. And when we move away from that, we muddy the playing field. With all that said, I do believe the answer to the question, does God exist, is no. And I'll explain why, but the important point is the time to believe any claim, including God exists or God doesn't exist, is after it's met a burden of proof. And a failure to demonstrate that the answer is no doesn't mean that you're justified in thinking it is reasonable to believe that the answer is yes. The fact that something is true is separate from whether or not you have good reason to think it is true. It may be true that aliens are en route to Earth to take over the planet, but I don't have sufficient reasons to believe that that is the case, so I cannot reasonably believe it even if it is happening and could be true right now. It is also worth noting that it, it's also... Hang on, let me start. It is worth noting that it's also to be reasonable in, to believe something that is, in fact, false. This is the realm where magicians and con men pray. By selling you something... That is false, while making it appear to be reasonable based on insufficient information. So first, the reason I do not believe God is exists is really this. I don't think the claim has established and met its burden of proof. There are a host of classical arguments for the existence of God, and they have been considered, then rejected, reformed, then rejected, dusted off and polished up, and then rejected as long as we, we have been attempting to resolve or reasonably evaluate this claim that a god exists. There are very few new arguments, if any, and all of their examples of trying to fit the argument and evidence to a conclusion one prefers rather than following the evidence and see where it leads, or acknowledging that we simply do not have sufficient information to reach a particular conclusion. So that some of these arguments, that the observation about the world necessarily means that a god exists, other arguments that the world probably points to a god. I'm not sure how one can calculate the probability of something that you can investigate and for what you have no concrete examples of. If you're trying to do a Bayesian analysis, you'll end up with a zero and the numerator and the denominator somewhere, and that's a big mistake. Still, others aren't arguments for the existence of god, but are arguments for belief that a, a god exists, irrespective of if one actually does, and if they re rely on fallacious appeals to consequences, things like, if there is no God, then we have no absolute grounding in for morality, uh, which isn't necessarily true, but if it were true, then what's the reason for concluding that there is a God, instead of concluding that we don't have an absolute grounding for morality? Is there a core pro There is a core problem that is getting overlooked, as far as I can tell, there has been no demonstration of any mechanism that would allow us to confirm the existence of anything supernatural. And if you you can't do that without that mechanism, speculation about the nature of the supernatural, the possibility of the supernatural, the probability of the supernatural, whether or not it can interact with reality or manifest in reality are equally equivalent or roughly equivalent to flights of fantasy. Without that mechanism, claims of the supernatural have in fact reacted with reality they are simply unfounded assertions. This may be, they may be correct, but we have no way, or we have no rational grounds on which to determine then. The appeals to the supernatural are untestable and unfalsifiable. It's as if the prosecution walked into into a courtroom and claimed that the defendant stole the diamonds by teleporting into the vault without even attempting to establish that teleportion or teleportation is possible or that it was the means by which the defendant was using in this instance. I'm not claiming that there is no supernatural realm. I just ha am pointing out what we have recognized for centuries. We have no mechanism to confirm that the supernatural exists or can interact with reality. This is why science rests on the foundations of methodological naturalism and why courtrooms disallow spectral evidence. If someone came to you and claimed that they have discovered something important and true and they cannot offer any kind of mechanism by which the truth could be independently independently verified would you believe them should you believe them i don't think you should and indeed i cannot this is a position in which or 
this is a position with gods and supernatural claims. I cannot believe them because they have, haven't met their burden of proof and they don't seem to be able to do so. I don't believe that God exists because the claim is not evidentially true, but more than just believing that a God exists, I'm further convinced that God does not exist. I'm not asserting this as a claim of absolute certainty that I've cracked this and scientifically proved that there are no gods. It's just what I think is reasonable. And yes, it does fall prey to the problem that if you can't calculate the probabilities, how do you determine that it is unlikely? The problem still exists in this. I think that the claim, though, at least the god of classical theism and the various subcategories that falls under that, uh, that falls into evidentially not true. I think the classical theistic god and most, if not all, of the gods that have been proposed throughout history qualify for that label. Not all the objections I list apply to all of the god claims, but all of them apply to some god claim. A god that exists outside of space and time seems not to be true by definition. And ex existent, as existence is temporal and uh, spatial, if something exists for zero seconds and occurs zero space, then what does that mean to say that it exists? The normal explanation is the word exists being used here is a kind of a placeholder for whatever exists would mean outside of space and time and doesn't actually mean it exists in the sense that we would use in reality. Well, okay, then why don't you use a different word than saying God exists because that's confusing. Essentially, God doesn't exist in reality, but he, air quotes, exists outside of reality. That doesn't solve the problem, though, because we have no reason to think that there is any such thing as outside of space and time, or that anything could be there in any meaningful sense. The God of classical theism is one that is omnipresent, uh, omnibenevolent, omnipotent, omniscient, and it is also plagued by countless potential fallacies for each of these terms and interactions for terms. And we don't have to go to the glib rock so heavy he can't lift it, uh, or, you know, a burrito so hot he can't eat it. Uh, the real philosophical problem with these a absolutes or these absolute ultimates were so weighty that the modern theologians have redefined these terms to where omnipotent no longer means omnipotent. It means maximally powerful or possessing all logical possible power. But these are more ill-defined flights of fantasy. They are as ad hoc as you can get. Our old definition of omnipotent didn't work, so let's come up with a new one. If you don't have an, if you don't have an idea of how much power, which is sometimes replaced with capability, is logically possible, have you really improved the situation by saying that something has all power, all the power that he could have? Have we just limited God? What if he? It's not actually possible to be maximally powerful. Uh, but what if the creation of the universe, one of the credits the omnipotent is granted with doesn't fall within the realm how do they determine that it is possible for anything being agent to do that maybe there's a limit to maximal possibility of that thinking agent but what if the universe can do this or uh, but what the universe can do or what the multiverse can do or what the cosmos can do can fall under a different category certainly there is a difference between what i can do and what some of you can do how did do we return? Uh, how do we determine that it is possible for any thinking agent to do that? Can this thinking agent make himself cease to exist? Has he done that? How do you know? Uh, once he's done it, can he make himself come back? In the end, it seems like a totality that God can do whatever God can do. I'm not a big fan of the problem of evil as a response to theism in almost any form. I do find the problem of divine hiddenness, though, to be a compelling reason to believe that there isn't a God, or at least not one that cares. Why, if there is a God who cares, isn't this obvious common knowledge? Why is it the best arguments for his existence are complicated things that only a tiny portion of the population can even comprehend? I'm going to take a sip of water real quick. My mouth's really dry. <laughs> Why do we have to learn so many dead languages and become veritable experts in many fields in order to have any hopes of finding this God? Why, for gods like the biblical God, was it perfectly acceptable to interact with reality, but not now? Why does God play favorites? Why 
require us to believe on claims that can't be properly investigated. What if, what if he ex- exists? Does he seem to be playing an eternal game of you know hide and seek? If you never meet your father, but your mom assured you that he was alive and he loved you and he was coming to see you next weekend, and she told you this every week and it never happened, and then she told you that you had to really, really want him to come visit you before he would show up, and that is your fault that he hasn't shown up. Wouldn't you reach a point to where? Uh, you have to recognize that continuing to believe her claim was an obvious mistake. People often ask, what would it take to convince me that a God exists? I don't know what it would take, but if there is a God under the classical definition, uh, that God should know exactly what it would take to convince me, and he has yet to do so. As for the fact that doesn't... uh, as the fact that doesn't happen demonstrates either God doesn't exist or doesn't want me to know that he exists yet. Either way, it's still not my problem. <sighs> Can this maximally powerful being, is he capable of convincing me? Can he communicate in a way that I can comprehend? If so, then why hasn't it happened? And what is omnipotence if it's limited by his ability to communicate with his creation? And if he's created me to where I'm too stupid to comprehend or incapable of understanding then isn't that his fault it's worse than that because the invisible and the non-existent are indistinguishable from us if someone told you they had a friend that existed outside of space and time who wouldn't offer any reasonable demonstration of his existence i think it would be fair to conclude tentatively and not an absolute position that this being doesn't actually exist at least not in any meaningful sense some apologists might or theists might argue that God must stay hidden or it will infringe on our free will. And depending on if you're of your definition of free will, we may or may not have it. So there's another conversation, but for uh, the God of the Bible, for example, had no problem with infringing on free will because he hardened Pharaoh's heart or he uh, purposely interacted with people in ways that clearly demonstrated his power. For those of you that believe in a devil, you have a being that was in God's presence and clearly interacted with God, yet was free to rebel. So hiddenness doesn't seem to infringe on free will if you accept that there is a devil. Well, it's a mystery. It's all in God's plan. My personal opinion, it's a stupid plan. Uh, I don't think omnip- omniscient being should be more stupid than we are. What I'm saying here is... I'm not meaning to be insulting with that, by the way. Um, When it comes to intelligence, there is seemingly endless pools of facts, and there seems to be no end to facts that you can know, but there, there does seem to be a limit on the foundations of thought. Telling me God is just so much smarter than me, uh, that the thing... Two minutes left, Chris. Two minutes left? Okay. Okay, where were I lost my place? Telling me God that is so much smarter than me to think that uh, the things that I have said and done seem stupid or actually brilliant doesn't make so much sense to me at all. Even if I'm wrong, this is just the way I have to look at it. Telling me that acts that are attributed to God that I look at and I see as immoral or actually moral because God can see so much further than I can doesn't solve a problem at all. And if God can clear this up, then I'm, or if he can't clear it up, rather, I'm kind of stuck. Why create an entire universe with billions of planets and billions of stars that have no discreditable effect on us if if your focus is us? That doesn't seem to be any good reason for that. Billions of years of expansions and millions of years of evolution that all intended species an insignificant blimp in the cosmic scale. And it seems that the claims is that some being existed in a way that is totally unreal. How then is this existence indistinguishable from its non-existence? And from our perspective, if there are logically identical or logically indistinguishable, then they are equivalent. It might as well you might as well be saying God isn't real, then God doesn't exist, because God doesn't exist unless we alter the world where it includes things outside of reality, which opens the door for all sorts of things that are outside of reality. And some of these things are mutually exclusive, which demonstrate that all the attempts to argue for the existence of God involves some sort of a special pleading. God is a special type of being that exists in a special way 
uh, that isn't like any other existing thing that we have ever experienced. Uh, leading evidence to a preferred conclusion. Uh, I'm almost done. Um, time's up. Sorry, uh, Chris, it's time's up already. You already reached your 20 minutes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right, sorry. Like, like, maybe, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe you can, you can leave it for the uh, rebuttal, I guess. Rebuttal. Okay. So, right. um, yeah. So, so anyway, thank you, Chris, for that opening statement. So, um, I guess we are going to the uh, rebuttal. So, uh, each of you are going to be given um, 10 minutes each, right? So, Smith, I guess you go first, right? So, once okay. you are ready, I will start the timer, all right? Okay. Anytime you're ready. Right, you can start the, okay, you can start the timer now. That was very good, uh, a good um, presentation by you, Chris. Thank you. Um, Chris spoke about free will. He spoke about morality. And yes, these are all one of the uh, topics that we can discuss, but I will not be discussing at the moment. That it in its sense have its own uh, it needs its own uh, personal topic and subject to be discussed with and not be added in uh, it, because it's a very complex thing when it comes to free will and when when it comes to uh, the idea of morality. So maybe we'll do it uh, later on. Um, also, one of the things Chris spoke about was <clears throat> uh, prosecution or how the uh, justice system work, or how the court works, right? That if a criminal comes in and uh, just makes a claim that he stole a uh, diamond or gold using a uh, teleportation um, machine or whatever, of course, it would be ridiculous for anyone to believe unless, unless evidence was there to prove that this machine actually exists. It's not a far-fetched idea once evidence can be presented, right? Once evidence can be presented, and that's how the court works. When you do not have eyewitnesses, when you do not have anyone over there, and things are things has happened, or a crime has happened, a murder or anything, how the court then works uh, is through the presentation of evidence. How strong of an evidence can someone uh, uh, bring? And that's what I've been talking uh, in my, that's what I've been putting out in my uh, first presentation. It is based on the evidence. And when we look at the evidence, for example, if I ask, um, not to be rude, this is just an example. If I ask anyone, do you believe that your father is your father? You would have to say that, Either I believe or I don't. That, that, uh, I agree with Chris on that. There cannot be any other way. It's either you do or you don't, right? But if you do believe that your father is your father, how, what makes you believe? You may say that, okay, I've not done a DNA test, but I can do a DNA test. All right, fine. I can then say that DNA tests can be can be uh, manufactured. It can be changed. It can People can do a lot of things. You're basically just taking testimony out of what the doctors have uh, have done, and they can they, they can do a lot of different things. And this has been done before in uh, certain cases in courts. Uh, money was uh, paid to, to to whoever who did the, the the DNA test. I don't know whether a scientist or a doctor, but people who are in charge of this, and it it, it was made uh, it was forged to look as if how they wanted it to look, right? But when you look at yourself and you see, I don't believe that my mother used to sleep around. That's number one. I do not believe that my dad used to go around doing these things. I look like my father though, right? I can see pictures of it. I can see birth certificates. I can see family te uh, all my family tes uh, testimonies are saying that I am the child of this person, right? I can see similarities. So where do I come now? It is much more reasonable to, for me to be, then accept that I am the father of my son rather than not being the father of my son, despite having written proof that he is not my father. So we, we can actually work on reasoning. And when I say reasoning, I mean logic reasoning, not emotional reasoning. I'm talking about logical reasoning over here, right? And that's the reason why I say when it's based on evidence, whether a God does exist or not, when we infer such evidence like the infinite regress, it is impossible that we can come to a conclusion that 
there can be an infinite regress of things leading backwards because then it will only lead backwards infinitely and we would not be here today. I would urge a lot of uh, many people who doesn't know the idea of how infinite regress works to please uh, go and find out or do a, 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 a small research on how infinite regress works. I do not have the time to explain how infinite regress works. It's basically quite forward. Um, everything is contingent onto another thing. If Chris is going to say that um, evidence proves this, then I would have to ask Chris to give me evidence or to give us evidence today here if he can show us what is in existence or have been brought into existence that is not contingent to another thing. Because I don't think so Chris can do that. I don't think so anybody can do that, right? Because we know that everything is contingent to something else. And as far as science go, science is very crippled when it comes to something that it cannot work with. To use science to look at the metaphysical is simply using a wrong tool. That is like saying I'm trying to pour soup in a not in a bowl but on a flat plate. You will never get the soup to stick in it. You will never get to drink your soup because it's not going to stay. It's a flat plate. You have just simply used the wrong tool. Just because you have used the wrong tool doesn't mean that this, you can't drink your soup. I don't know if that's a bad analogy or not, but I hope that Chris understands it. Um, basically, that's what I'm saying, that science is not the right tool that you can use to actually try to come to a reasonable conclusion that a God does exist. Right? So, um, what else did Chris say? Let me just check up here. I wrote down some things. Okay. So, supernatural existence. Um, I would have to ask Chris to uh, elaborate on this later on during our uh, our discussion. Uh, what is, or how does he believe, or how does he understand what a supernatural uh, existence is? Is it, are we talking about ghosts and goblins? Are we talking about, I don't know, exorcists? Uh, what are we talking about here? Are we talking about uh, uh, an exorcism? What What is the understanding by Chris? Right of what the supernatural existence is, I think infinite regress has got has given strong evidence and strong uh, uh, well evidence that that something has to begin from somewhere. I think reasoning through it with my um, kick analogy, and I'm using a kick analogy because I used to be a chef. I just threw that in, just for extra information. Anyway, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, <laughs> so um, you can actually postulate. You can see. If someone who doesn't know how to cook and you eat something that is really, really disgusting, you know that person can't cook. Even you don't need to know how to cook, but you can reasonably come to a conclusion that you this guy does not know how to cook because it's disgusting. Food should not be like this, right? But if the food is, is, is tasty and delicious and you love it and you, you know, once putting it in your mouth, you go, mm, wow, this is good. You can reasonably conclude to say this guy knows what he's doing. He knows how to cook in that very way. I'm not saying that, um, that, that, that we have to be, you know, less or, uh, or, or in, in education or in ability to think. Two minutes left, uh, Smith. All right. Because God has created everything therefore god knows similarly if we look at the the creation uh, the creators of apple they will send in with every apple phone that you buy whatever uh, model right a text saying how to use this and we say god have done this so god has spoken to us in the islamic paradigm god has spoken to us he has sent us the quran and the quran tells us how to live our life what to look for how to uh, be successful here and what's going to happen in the afterlife and how to be successful in the afterlife. So, um, yes, to answer Chris on that, God actually for us, the Muslims, he did send us that. And, it, and, and whether it's corrupted or not, um, has things been changed? How do we know that, that, that we can trust it? That's another discussion that we can have in the future. Um, but yeah, I think... I think One minute left. Proof, yeah. So uh, to, to give another example... The universe is complex that shows if or when or how 
the universe was made, it had to be made by something that is complex. Human beings have not even found what is in the depth of the ocean. 99% of creatures in the ocean is unknown to humans, right? But if God created them, if God created them, for us Muslims, God did, he would know, wouldn't he? So it's not about if God is there, why does he have to be smarter than me? It's just that he is the creator, so and hence, he would know more than us because he created us and everything else. I would conclude with that. All right. So thank you, Smith, for that uh, rebuttal. So um, I'm going to reset the timer and then, uh, Chris, you can start anytime you're ready. Um, all right, I'm ready. Um, all right, we'll go ahead. See. Yeah. This is the part I'm a little nervous for. Uh, so... He pretty much said that is it much more reasonable to believe God exists? And I still, I mean, the reasons he's given, I don't find it reasonable. Um, he made a mention about God is metaphysical. I, I, I want to ask later, I guess, during the crossfire and maybe open conversation, what he means by metaphysical, like it, just metaphysical, like our consciousness. But where does that exist at? Is it outside of space and time? Uh, he said that we don't have an answer for intelligence. Um, I mean, when it comes to where did intelligence come from, the best I'm going to be able to give you is my only honest answer. I don't know. Um, he brought up asking a duck to make a cell phone. Uh, we have, and is it possible? Uh, I would kind of say it's probable eventually given enough time but i mean he doesn't want to talk about then he wants to talk about now um it's not outside of the realm of impossible it, it, it could be in the realm of possible uh he brought up and mentioned can something come from nothing i i do not know what nothing is I, we have no examples of nothing we have no demonstrations of nothing. Um, as far as I know, with the universe in the Big Bang, it is something from something and not nothing from nothing because we have that singular point that is something and not nothing. Um, as for the Big Bang and the universe expanding, uh, the best way to put it into understanding with the universe expanding, it's like a balloon. And they say we are a little dot that we've drawn with a Sharpie. And there's these other dots around this balloon. And if you blow that balloon up, it expands and those dots move away from each other. And so everything is the universe, the cosmos. Like this, there's no outside of the balloon. Everything is that balloon. Um, so if something started the Big Bang, which would be before time, and before the expansion of space, I don't comprehend and understand what it means to say that something exists for zero seconds in a and doesn't occupy any space at all. Um, I because it would to say something calls the Big Bang. If the Big Bang is the beginning of time, time starting point is zero. Something happened before zero, so. I mean, if time was irrelevant, I could see that, but we have no evidence for this. Um, he brought up walking into a room and you see a cake, you know that someone made that cake. And I would agree because we have examples of people making cakes. We have examples of people making watches. We have examples of people making cars. What we do not have examples is something making people other than you know reproduction uh but like a tree maker something making a tree from dust we have no examples of that these are things that are naturally formed we um i don't see us being created a necessity i think us being created needs to be demonstrated because i mean how do we know it didn't naturally form uh, I consider that one similar to the watchmaker analogy. 
Um, he said that everything was fine tuned, and I greatly disagree with that. Um, to say that this world was, and this universe was finally tuned for us is similar to a pawn saying, Oh, look at this hole. It was perfectly made for me, and that uh, it, it was meant for me to be here. But what's going to happen when a very hot drought comes through and it doesn't rain for weeks that that puddle is going to disappear it's like we actually have adapted to survive where we are on this little rock in the vast universe the universe is out to kill us it does not care if we live or die it has no motives but like what I mean when it's out to kill us, like take a anaconda and put it into the Antarctic and see how long it lasts. It won't last long at all because it was not meant to live in there because it adapted and grew to its environment where it is and evolved over a very, very, very long period of time. Um, he brought up infinite regress. Um, you know, I we can't logically i mean yes infinite regress is impossible but we have no way to actually evaluate before the big bang or actually even see the big bang itself um we really have no way of knowing if it actually is infinite or not which i feel like i i i'm going ahead and saying that no it's not an infinite regress but how do we take the first cause and give it and actually say that it must have intellect, that it must have a will, that it was conscious and aware, like it might not, it could have just happened. For example, if I were to, like, if it could have just happened by chance, things could happen by chance. For example, what is the chance that if I'm dealing someone a deck, like a hand in poker, that they get a royal flush on the first go, uh, a lot of people say, well, he probably cheated to get that. Is it probable? Could it happen by chance that he did get a royal flush on as his very first hand? Yes, but you can't prove that I cheated and gave him that hand. You don't know if I did or not. There's no way of knowing if you have no way of observing that I cheated unless I were to admit that I cheated. But like, that's not a part of this analogy. Uh, God is something you can't show his creation, can't really comprehend him. I think you said something along those lines. That's what I wrote down. Uh, God, it's not something that you can show. Um, well, there, this, I feel like it falls into the realm of fantasy. It's like me saying I have a magical dragon that's in my garage. Um, and say you ask that you want to see this magical dragon. Well, oh, okay, we're in the garage, and oh, I say, well, he's invisible. Well, maybe we can hear him. Well, no, he's he flies so quiet you can't hear him. Well, maybe let, let's put some powder on the ground, and maybe he'll leave some foot track like steps. Well, there's uh, he flies all the time. He doesn't ever leave traces. Well, may, does he make any kind of noises at all? Well, no, he talks to you if you. Pray to him. That's the only way. You just have to believe he exists. Like, and I feel that to me, uh, this is what that would be is when you say God is something that I can't comprehend because. Two minutes yeah, left, Chris. I yield the rest of my time. I have nothing more. All right. Okay. So yeah. Okay. I'll start the timer then. Okay. Thank you, Chris, for your no rebuttal. So anyway, I guess we'll be moving to the um, crossfire section. I guess you guys can, you know, uh, ask questions and um, yeah, each with each other we, and you know, yeah, cross examine right, each other, we, right? Before we move that, uh, Chris, do you want to have a drink or something? I need to have a drink. Oh you. yes. <laughs> yes. Please. Yeah, go ahead. yeah. Yeah. Let's take a break. Yeah. I guess we can take a break. Yeah. <laughs> yeah go ahead. Okay, take your time. Don't worry. I reset the timer. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, by the way, the uh, crossfire section is uh, fifteen minutes. So, um, so I guess. Um, can, we, can, we, are... can we can we make it as a discussion instead of a crossfire? I think okay. Yeah, I feel. I agree. Right. 
Okay, all right, discussion then. All right, yeah, they can, you can call it whatever you want. Crossfire, discussion, whatever, all right? So I'll give you 15 minutes and well, then... Call uh, whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think it's, to me it's the same thing, okay, because uh, I've been involved in these debates, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so um, I guess you can start whenever you're ready, all right? All right. All right. Chris, you okay? Yes. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, so I'll start the timer now, okay? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so Chris, uh, I guess I guess my my question would be then, or, this, or for this discussion would be then, um, like you you say that if you believe in a magical dragon, right? And so yes. if I ask, yeah. So if I ask a dragon, uh, you know, can I see him? You say that he's invisible. Okay, can I hear him? No, he speaks really really softly. If there is no evidence whatsoever that that the dra invisible dragon exists. I will not be in the argument over here today to, to talk about the existence of God, right? Because then you can just dismiss. But if you do have evidence, okay, logical evidence that cannot be any other way, for example, of uh, infinite regress and so on, then I would say there is a possibility, or a possibility is higher that Chris does actually has a, a magical unseen dragon in his uh, garage, right? Because you can actually produ uh, produce an evidence for it rather than not at all. And I believe that I have actually produced, uh, well, not all the evidence, some evidence. Uh, example would be consciousness i'm not saying god is consciousness i'm saying consciousness is one of the many evidence for god what do you say about that um consciousness is a byproduct of the brain and like so say what, is, what is consciousness consciousness well that's a, i mean it's metaphysical obviously um it's a byproduct of the brain what i mean like what if someone is under the influence of drugs then you know their perception of reality is also altered if they get hit in the head or shot in the head and they survive but there's brain damage that affects their motor functions that also can affect how they perceive things how they believe things um there has been things done to the brain like for example they did a study many years ago where they went inside someone's head and they cut directly down the middle of the brain and severed those nerves and what you ended up happening is developing on both sides two independent personalities one of them spoke and the other one wrote with the hand um and they had opposing positions on things uh you destroy the brain the consciousness they're no longer conscious that's so, really but, yeah but but does it exist though even though someone takes drugs or altered the way of thinking or anything that you have said the question is does consciousness exist and is it material uh it would exist metaphysically like not physically but it's a byproduct so it's not, so, so, so it's not material no it's not material it's a byproduct yeah. of the brain you get what i mean like yes, yes. Ang like feeling hunger i cannot show you hung feeling hungry i can only express hunger uh i cannot show you how i feel pain but it's a byproduct both of those are byproducts of the brain you get what i mean I do. and i, so I, I put huh go ahead okay, okay. Uh, uh, understanding okay go go <laughs> Go, go, go. Um, yeah, I would put consciousness with hunger and, you know, pain. Like, it's a, all of those are byproducts of the brain from what science has shown so far right. of other understandings. Right. So, so, so when, you, when you say consciousness is, is, is metaphysical, right, and you asked the question what metaphysical is earlier. Yeah, like, I, I kind of that i'm trying to comprehend like something like you're saying god is metaphysical but like that's a byproduct like when i say consciousness it's metaphysical in the sense of it's a byproduct of something you get what i mean like a like you're looking at your computer 
and you see your screen, it's the software is a byproduct of the hardware that's in your computer. You get what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like in that comprehending sense, even though you can physically can see your screen and all that, I'm trying to give it some personification here to elaborate on what I meant. Like, I don't know what you mean. Metaphysical, like is when you say God is metaphysical, is this like a mind outside of a body outside of space and time? Like, I'm, I'm trying to comprehend and wrap around what you mean when you say God is metaphysical. Cause... So well, what I meant by God is metaphysical is something that is not material, something that you can't see, taste, so, touch. Essentially like a conscious mind outside of a mind or a body. A consciousness, yes. So consciousness right. is, is, is a byproduct of your brain, but it exists, right? It exists. Right. Yeah. So what I'm saying is that consciousness is one of the evidence of God. I'm not saying that it is God. If I am saying consciousness is God, then you've got a point to say then that, that it is a byproduct. So it can't be God. I'm saying that it is one of the evidence for the existence of God. So the answer, the, 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 the answer that you, you, you are giving really doesn't coincide with what I'm saying. Well, well, um, I would also say consciousness is a byproduct of evolution, too. Like, it's an adaptation over time that the brain had formed as well. Uh, when you give several million years for evolution, that can happen. Okay. It's a form of and that. So, that, that, I, I'm, and so, and um, I think, I've, yeah, I've looked at, at these studies before, and um, consciousness has evolved from uh, being unintelligent to a certain level of intelligence. I, I, I looked into that studies and yeah, okay. But the question then then would be, this, did consciousness start from somewhere or did it just came into existence for it to evolve? Uh, repeat the question. Did consciousness start from, yeah, did consciousness start, consciousness start at the beginning, or did it just was there for uh, and then it evolved? Uh, well, I'm gonna uh, bef re before, ask the question be, 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 to make sure I understand. Yeah, huh? so okay, uh, let, let before you before before I go into that, so you ask the question, what is nothingness? So, nothingness is the uh, the, the absence of everything, okay? So, that's what uh, what nothingness is the absence of everything. So, when we talk nothing, totally nothing. So now you have got nothing, okay, and then consciousness suddenly came, right, and then it evolved. So where did consciousness come from? Did well, it, was it, at, it just popped out into existence or? Well, the body and the brain adapted to form consciousness. So it happened by um, evolution. Like it eventually the body, the brain, the body, the brain evolved to develop consciousness. And Chris, that would be the starting point. Huh? Chris, does a, does a cell have consciousness? The cell? Does bacteria has, yeah, does bacteria has consciousness? Uh, I, not that I'm aware of. I could be completely right, okay. wrong with that. No problem. So the, the idea is that you, so you just said, I'm um, just going to go a little bit into this consciousness before we uh, move on uh, from this. Um, so you're saying that consciousness started from uh, what the human body developed, okay, developed it and then through time, uh, you know, however uh, long of time, it became better and it grew and, and evolved and become better. The still doesn't understand, still doesn't answer my question of then did it just come because if you say that if it's from a human being then where did this human being came from and how did this human then create the consciousness by itself right because then the answer yeah. the question still still lies there are uh, unopened where did it come from okay but um i guess it's it's, it's fine uh we've like uh, been talking about consciousness um chris any questions for me well, I mean, I'm, I'm fine with saying I don't ex know exactly where at one point where consciousness would have been. I would assume that it would be before primates, like, you know, in the like humans evolved from um, 
estate that evolved from Neanderthals, which was a form of prime ape, and then before that, that branch, and then you know, dogs have consciousness, cats have consciousness, monkeys have consciousness. They experience pain. They experience suffering, sadness. Um, I mean, they all that all observable animals that we can see that are conscious um, experience. I can't tell you. I know where they come from. At what point? Uh, I'm fine with saying I don't know because that's the honest answer. Is it? Is it? Uh, is it? Is it? More, let me ask you this, uh, Chris. Uh, I, I think it's okay to say to say don't know, right? I think it's okay to yes. say don't know, but 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 we we are intelligent beings. I think uh, you would agree on that. We're intelligent beings, and just and we can reason yes. to using our intellect. Would it be much more for you, Chris, personally? Yes. What what would be a much more intellectual uh, reasoning, right? That you can come to, did consciousness just popped into existence, or was it? created that it had to come from something i'm not talking about god right now right i'm talking about that could consciousness just simply popped into existence before human beings before animals before primates or uh, whatever you were saying just now that it just popped in like you're just saying just consciousness no body nothing just popped into existence yeah is it reasonable uh, to, to 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 think that 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 is uh, in, in intelligent. Is it an intelligent it, assertion? Yeah. Uh, I don't think it would be reasonable to say that. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying, Chris. When I say that um, it is much more intelligent to 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 to, to uh, sorry, it is much more intelligent to look at things and uh, you know do the studies. And, and come back and see that, look, uh, a phone can't just have popped into existence, right? It needed a yeah. creator, right? So, yeah, of course, we know who created the phone would be human beings. And, and we can see that, like you say that, you know, if, if you walked into a, a room and you see a cake there, of course, you'd not, it'd be ridiculous that you would think that, hey, this cake just came out of nothing. You would definitely say that someone created the cake. And that is because you have seen people making the cake before. But what I yes. am saying, when you, go when you go further into that, when you look at the cake and how it's ma made, uh, sorry, how it's baked, you can actually also then postulate to know, wait a minute, the guy who created this cake, it's a good baker or the person who created this cake is not a good baker. Would you agree on that? Yes. Right. So similarly, when, when I look into the universe and I look at how it's been done. Okay. How it's been done. I'm not talking about fine tuning. I'm talking about the way it's been done with the, with, with, with all the planets and then life, right? Our wings, our brains, our consciousness and all this. Is it wrong for me to then uh, come to the uh, to a reasonable conclusion to say that wait a minute, things couldn't have just popped into existence from nothing, right? So whatever it is, okay, that brought this existence, this whole cosmos into what it is today, has to know what it was doing. It is rather than rather than. Things just simply happening by chance. Um, I'm trying to get to the understanding of how you're saying that you know it would have to be conscious. How could it not? Like, I mean, we have many probable causes. Like, how do you know for sure that it is a supernatural, it, metaphysical mind that did it and not by chance like how what is the mechanism you are using to determine that okay so you guys have two minutes before, left well that was fast <laughs> because yeah because we, uh, yeah um because because what 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 is it is that uh before we reach into the uh, metaphysical brain consciousness i just want to i want to do it step by step right uh to look and to understand and to see the, the cosmos and, and, and how it's been created and everything. There's two two ways, right, that you can come. Either it's by chance or either it's by a designer. I'm not talking about God. 
at this point i'm not talking about god yet okay god has got his own attributes and so on and so forth right but i am asking the question between the two uh, answers that you can choose which one do you think is much more uh, reasonable that it just happened by chance everything just happened by chance or was there that this whole thing was actually designed to be in that way consciousness cells veins uh, uh, human beings uh, this dna and and all this right which one minute which left. one would be, which one would be more uh, you know reasonable to think like if i ask you, chris yeah like if i ask you chris is it reasonable to think that um, that if i give a um a sloth a ink he would be able to write a book or is it more right. reasonable to think that he will not be able to do it because doesn't have the intelligence to do it which one is more reasonable for you well does the ape have the intelligence to do it <laughs> no he does, be my, the, the, the sloth, he likes yeah, the, that's, well, if, if he likes, he likes the intelligence, the intelligence if he lacks the intelligence to be able to do it then the obvious answer would be no but that doesn't prove the point that you're getting at i don't believe to me anyways because like i feel like we're making a leap here mm -hmm. uh, and yep. by chance i mean that's a very very different subject from the example I gave. Like the example I gave, let's say me and you, I'm your, I'm a dealer and I deal you a hand and you got a royal flush. You know what a royal flush is. I uh, guys, uh, I see the time has gone, gone uh, has, has finished, but do you guys want to continue? We can add another five minutes or 10 minutes up yeah, to you. Sure. Oh yes. No, I want to continue. Yeah. So, so uh, how long, really, do you, so how long, do you, so how long do you want to edit? Another 10 minutes will be fine. Five. Good. Five minutes. All right. Okay. So I'll start the timer again, and then you can, you guys can start. Okay. Okay. Go. Yeah. yeah so please, if, see. as I was saying, like if you were dealt a royal flush, there is a chance that I, that you got that by, you know, just random shuffling, got it. But is it also probable that I cheated and intentionally gave you that hand? Yeah, it, it, it is probable and that has been demonstrated before. We, we, we know that it can be cheap. You're talking about a deck of cards that has, what, 24 cards? And every each card has got four of each. You've got four of spades, four of clubs, four of uh, diamonds, and four of uh, the yeah. other one. I don't know. It's all of 52. It, right? So, yeah. Yeah, 52, sorry. Yeah. So you, you can actually mathematically come to a conclusion on how it, it can be done. So, you know, By it, chance. It, chance yeah, I mean, you, you can actually mathematically, because you know there's only four of this and four of that. There's only this and there's only 52 cards. And, 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 and there's Joker and there's this and what Royal Flush is, right? And um, many card players, uh, excellent card players, I think, they have demonstrated this many a times on uh, Facebook videos that, that this, it, it is not, it cannot be based on chance. Although I will agree with you, when you play in a hand of card, it also can be chance. Right? Yes, I myself have gotten, you know, a, a, a royal flush. I have, right? And I'm just playing with, with a friend of mine who doesn't know anything about cards. It's impossible that he did it by, by, by cheating, right? But what I'm talking about is something much more complex than that, right? Much, much more complex than that, that where, where when you bring in science into it, science suddenly becomes crippled because it can't study the metaphysical. It can't study what happened after, before the Big Bang. It does not know what a singularity is. It can only say that there was a single point in time. It can't postulate any other idea of what the singularity is, right? But when we look yeah. at a certain thing, right? When we look at a certain thing, back to the cake analogy, the, for me, and I, don't, and I think you'll agree with me, it is much more reasonable for me to, to to look at the cake and come to a conclusion well this person knows how to bake a cake or this person doesn't know how to bake a cake just by looking at how the cake is right i can make yeah. that conclusion right that's what i'm saying so um 
I would, I would that, that's what I'm saying. So when I look at something, when I look at the universe, when I study about uh, culture, mm-hmm. not, not the yeah, not the religious culture, right? The uh, cultures, right? Cultures and DNA and so on. Um, for for me to look at DNA as a source of life to to just come in by chance, I think it is it is it is it is not explaining. I think it's just, uh, and I'm not trying to offend anyone here. Uh, I don't want to offend anyone here. I think that it's just a lazy way of thinking, of coming to a conclusion, oh, well, DNA just happened through chance. Um, because if we look into it and we study it, we will definitely come to a, a, a much more reasonable understanding that, wait a minute, DNA is a design. Now, who designed it? That's up for grabs. That's we can we can we can talk about that later on, right? But DNA in itself, in its structure, it's it's more One possible left. to believe. More possible to believe that it is uh, a design because you even looking at it, it looks like a design. It was not just put into place. Just like you say, if the monkey has the intelligence to write a book, yes, of course, why not, right? But if the monkey does not have the intelligence, he will not be able to. I agree with you, Chris, 100%. So if this creator was not intelligent to be able to build the world or the universe in the way it is right now, then it would not be the way it is right now. It is because he did have that intelligence and he does have that amount of intelligence. And that's why the universe is built in the way that it is right now. Do we still have time? <laughs> we have only a few seconds left, so I guess it's, uh, uh, yeah, it's only about five seconds left, so there's no point. Okay. So, yeah. So, anyway, yeah. So, I guess uh, the discussion section is over. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Thank you, guys, for for being very civil throughout the debate. I really enjoyed moderating this. So, maybe uh, do you guys want to go to the conclusion and then we can wrap this up? Closing statement. Yeah. Yeah. Closing statement. Yeah. Closing statement. Yeah. So I guess five minutes each. Yeah, I think that would be good. So, uh, Chris, you will okay. close up. I will. I will go first. Yeah. Because I hey, know. Wait. Sure. I started first, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah. yeah you, I did. you did. You did. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, you yeah. Did. So, Chris, you will. Uh, you will close. So I'll go first. Uh, so yeah. So this is my. This is my closing uh, uh, statement, right? As I've said and uh, I said repeatedly again and again in this uh, discussion slash debate, whatever you want to call it, that when we want to find the existence of a creator, a God, right, we need to be uh, sincere, open-minded, and we need to look at the evidence and find the evidence, okay? So once we find the evidence, we need to look at the evidence and we need to put our rational thinking, our logic, our intelligence, right? And I say this, right? Our God-given intelligence to come to an understanding, as Allah says in the Quran, do they not ponder? Do they not think? They, or do, uh, right? And Allah says again in the Quran, did they think that they, they were their self, their own creators, right? Did they think that they were their self, their own creators, right? So these are questions uh, very, very, very... Uh, important questions that comes out from the Quran. I would urge a lot of people out there who are looking for the uh, the existence of God to look at the Quran and see what it says um, rather than to look at it to, to try to you know trap anyone. No one's going to be no one no one is getting trapped from anybody here right Be sincere, have an open mind, look at the Quran, do your research, look at what you can understand and come to a certain conclusion because all we do have in this world is our rationale, right? A crazy person, you will not listen to anything a crazy person say. Why? Because he's not rational, right? He thinks a man can fly. Well, a man, that well, it's up for debate, right? Some people would say a man can fly if, if he's sitting on a plane. I'm talking about a Superman way of flying, right? Uh, he will fly off the building and he will drop and die. So all we have is our intelligence and our rational and we, and, and we can use it and we can come to a conclusion. Simply a very simple conclusion. Is it much more logical to believe in an existence of a creator God 
rather than there is nothing at all. Okay, that everything just happened by chance, by millions of years, by billions of years of erosion, uh, evolution, and so on. And I would have love to have this conversation again with Chris because Chris, I've really enjoyed talking to you. Um, I really love you. You were very respectful, you know. And likewise, you know, I hope that I've not said anything to offend you. If I if you were offended, that was not what I wanted to do. Honestly, that was not what I wanted to do. And also that this is a conversation between two human beings, right? Intellectual human beings, and we are just trying to come to a certain, you know, understanding try to look more and gain more knowledge in order for us to be more better, uh, uh, to have to build a much more better intellect in our brains, right? Um, and for that, uh, I, I'm okay. I'm, I'm, I'm done. Oh, yeah. Wait, one more thing. Chris, uh, I would love to talk about evolution with you. You mentioned evolution. I would love to talk about evolution with you. So maybe we can uh, schedule that for the next time, hopefully. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. All right. Yeah. I, so you have a uh, you actually you have another two minutes, bro. So you really want to give up that time? I'm okay. All right. Okay. I'll, I'll, give, right. It, I'll give it. To, I'll give it. I'll give it to Chris if Chris wants it. Yeah. Okay. So maybe uh, I guess Chris will have five plus two minutes then. Okay. So that will be seven uh, minutes. Yeah. If you want to, you want to use that time. It's up to you. All right. So yeah. So I'll start the time. Uh, I'll start the countdown. Uh, the timer once you you begin. Right. So yeah. Go. Yeah. All right. Um, well, I'm just going to kind of wing this. We see God in itself. I can't come to the conclusion that he does exist, like mainly because I feel as though that I haven't been given a way to be able to falsify God for one, which that is I'm asking for um scientific evidence in a way but i guess if he doesn't exist scientifically then i feel that this is kind of falling into the category of flights of fantasy and i mean no offense by when i say flights of fantasy when it comes to god but to me it's like well hey i have a girlfriend but she goes to another school and no you can't meet her talk to her see what she looks like or anything like that logically concluding i mean other than the fact that he was stated that he exists outside of time and space um he's a metaphysical mind to me that sounds similar to a spirit but i'm not going to say that he ever said that no i know he did not claim that i'm just i'm having a hard time comprehending and wrapping my head around these things um i'm still having a like logic being the I think I, I'm not, I don't want to misrepresent him by any means, but I feel like logic alone is not a good enough mechanism to conclude that God exists. I'm opening to be always convinced. I'm opening to being convinced. I, I want to be convinced if it's the case. I want to believe as many true things as possible and few false things or false things as possible as I can. But I, I would just say, really, when it comes to does God exist, the question, um, I, I see no reason to be convinced. I'm always open to be convinced, but I see no good reason at this current moment to be convinced. Maybe we'll get to have another conversation later in the future. Maybe you get to do this again. I, I would love that. Maybe with a different topic, though. Maybe a more specific God or um free will i'd love to debate free will but that neither of these things are the things that are uh the topic i just don't feel that enough has been presented with uh consciousness and intelligence yes we know these things exist we can't pinpoint exactly when we got them but i i think that this is kind of falling under the category of saying you know we, we have a defendant in trial and they accused him of teleporting into the bank vault to steal the diamonds and then teleporting back out. How do we determine that God gave us intelligence if we have no way to show us how he did it, if that makes sense? And that's, I think, I, everything I have. I yield the rest of my time. 
Uh, you have about uh, another four or five minutes. Please, you sure you want to continue? Ah, uh, yeah, I'm good. All right. Okay. So I guess uh, that wraps it up. I guess. So yeah. Thank you, gentlemen, for for this very uh, cordial debate. Because you know, I've been involved in so many debates with AT even, and you know, some of them could be very nasty, especially towards the end. But this is one of the most civil debates that I've ever been, I've ever witnessed. So it's very good to be part of this. I'm very happy to, you know, moderate this and actually be part of this. 